Website, a classical website versus social media linkage tools like Linktree. Since I am losing using Linktree and also losing my speech patterns, this video, in this video, I will use Linktree and social media linkage tools because there are also other platforms simultaneously, not simultaneously, but interchangeably. First, we will cover the functionality of a website. Next, we will cover the functionality of Linktree. And next, we will cover what makes the most sense. First, the functionality of a website is that is it is your digital hub in the internet. It is you, your public space. And everybody who wants to visit you visits your web, web page. At least it was like this in the past. So now, why doesn't it maybe not make sense anymore? It depends. It depends on what you actually want to accomplish with you being public on the internet. Is it you spreading content or is it you having basically a contact? Basically, so the question is whether you want a public hub where there is public contact information, where it says contact me or hire me or things like these. So if you are a business, a website still makes sense. But if you are a business, it would also make sense to create traffic. And creating traffic is now where the second point comes in. Because the more content you post to the public, and the public in this regard are different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, the more traffic you can generate for this one hub, the more it will eventually come out because your hub, your web page till now has probably a function. It's to get people onto something. It's to get people to buy things on your web page. It's to buy services from you. It's to buy or to create attention for your cause. Maybe you are collecting or you're collecting donations for something. So what it, it doesn't really matter what it is. You probably want a huge attention in the beginning. Then a few of these people you created attention so for or that have now interest in your thing actually will convert to the next step, which is maybe the web page or a landing page on your web page. And then the next thing is maybe they will buy something or maybe they will follow you on social media or maybe they will think, oh, what a cool person, which could also be a goal, self-confirmation. So now the idea is a web page in the past used to be the middleman, the middleman between the traffic generating thing and then the middleman and then the action follows. So the call to action, not the call to action, but the action that follows. So now you can use a website as a traffic generating thing if there is something hosted on there. So if people then search for it, then the traffic is basically generated not by the people watching content, but by the people searching. But if people watch content on any social media platform, what happens is that they also search for something, whether this is through an algorithm, so kind of indirectly nowadays, or directly on YouTube as a search engine, they search for something. So this that attention is basically primar primarily already there. The, the idea is just to convert this attention into maybe they into them watching a video. So now, if you have somebody in the beginning, and then the middleman, what if you then created content on your website? That's what we wanted to discuss now. The idea is that you either have text on your website or something else on your website, which can be searched for. This can be pictures, this can be videos. That's basically the three media types. Something visual, text on, with pictures or pictures, something audio or video. So now, the classic example is a blog. So basically, you create a blog post on your web page and then create traffic on your web page itself. Because if people now search on Google for a review of uh, this notebook or what services or how do I get a custom-made chair or things like these, or how do I get an African custom-made chair that looks Af like African culture thingy or Chinese or European, it doesn't really matter. So just the thing, the interest um, displayed in keywords, basically, or maybe nowadays even in a question, because Google understands questions better and better. So now in the past, you could use your web page as a hub, and you can still do it. But 
you could also produce content as blog posts basically because most pages do blog posts. So if you look at companies these days, what they often do is, for example, if a company makes a video app, then what they often do is they explain different topics on their web page. And this then creates traffic for the thing. And it also creates similarity, familiarity with the brand. And if it then comes to a buying decision later on, because something is already familiar, familiar, we are actually more likely to choose things that are already we are already familiar with. So that's also kind of a strategy. There is actually a channel on YouTube that produces kind of video essays and film analysis. And they really make, they incorporated the strategy of producing content for traffic for their brand really good. They basically have a YouTube channel and this YouTube channel sometimes mentions their project management tool for video creation. It's called Studio Binder and they, they, they make very good videos. So now back to Linktree and back to the web pages. You could use your web page as a blog. But these days, there is also another way to host your blog. And this other way to host your blog is either on Facebook, Tumblr, or Medium. Medium these days is basically a blogging platform, not these days, but also in the past, that is subscription or ad-based. And it's basically the hub. It's basically the social media for blogging. It used to be Tumblr before, but Tumblr was more like a classical social media platform where people just posted random, random things like on Twitter or on Facebook. But on Medium now, people actually wrote articles and posted them. So now we have the article format on Medium. And this means now the content hosting functionality of your web page could also now be outsourced. And that's where we now meet point three. Point three is combining these two and seeing what fits you best. In order to create a website. You have to do very many things. You first have to register a domain name. This can mean that you just register a subdomain from a bigger domain. This could mean you register your blog on wordpress.com. And now wordpress.com is also a blogging page similar to Medium. And WordPress simultaneously is owned by Automatic, the bigger company. And so Automatic basically produces the content management system, so the backend of many blogs on the internet. And simultaneously, they also offer a very plug -in, easy plug and play solution called WordPress.com. So now WordPress.com acts as also a blogging site. But what I actually wanted to say is that you actually have to think about all of these things if you want to create a web page. You have to think about whether you want to create a domain name. And back to WordPress, your domain name then, for example, would be, so you have the bigger domain name, let's say wordpress.com. And what these pages very easily can do, and what you also can very easily do if you have your own blog, your own domain, is to create subdomains. A subdomain is then, let's say your blog is My Kitchen. Your blog is called My Kitchen, and now your domain, the domain you could register at wordpress.com or at medium is m most often a subdomain, which is then mykitchen.wordpress.com. This also works kind of the other way around. If you think about social media pages, they have usually first facebook.com and then slash the page. So basically, these are the two options to display a sub page on a bigger page. And now when it comes to hosting your blog again the first you have to register the domain so basically all the domains are out there already and now you can go and 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 say to somebody to somebody who actually is allowed to reserve these domains and to rent these domains that you want to own this domain or you want to have it reserved for a certain amount of time or rent it basically because if you don't rent it anymore it goes back to the owner or to wherever the domains are stored, which nobody uses, nowhere. So now the idea is you have to rent it. That's already a cost. And now this already creates difficulty in the thinking process because it's not as easy as, oh yeah, I just post something to Instagram and everything is free. The content distribution is free. The content hosting is free. Everything is free. When it comes to podcasts, for example, a few years ago, there was not a solution that offered free hosting. So if you then created a podcast and all of these podcasts that are still big and existing and have been created many years ago, they had to pay five to 10 euros or 
dollars or 15 or even more a month just to host a podcast. And often this means that you then don't do the podcast because for 10 or 15 euros or dollars a month, you could also pay insurance. You could also save this money. So what I'm saying is it becomes harder because you have to think about it more because you have to sacrifice more time and money for it. So the first, the first option now, or the first step is reserving the domain. The next step is installing a content management system onto the domain itself. So basically you need a hosting platform where you can actually then upload these things to. And these two don't need to be connected even though they often are. In Germany, for example, I use Strato, which is a hosting service, and simultaneously you can reserve domains for it. Many know big names like in the US, godaddy.com, I think it is called. And well, the next step is creating the content management system. And then on this thing, the content management, the CMS is basically kind of the software of the website, you could say. So the interface of the website, you can actually interact with them. And then in the third thing, you can actually then create content and also theme your website according to your branding and things like these. And all of these things take time. And there are also regulations regarding websites. Take Europe again, for example, because it's my example, and therefore I know about it. There is something called the GDPR, and that's basically a data privacy regulation. And everybody who, who hosts a website can, be, can get a big lawsuit if they don't follow suit with this regulation. And now the idea is these things are also things you can outsource. So basically what you are doing if you are hosting a website, on the one side, you have the function of a blog, but on the other side, you also have the function of a hub. So these two are the main functions we are actually discussing. The function of a blog, so a content hosting thing that is visually, so a blog, and also the hub. So now the idea with Linktree is, if you only need the hub, but not the hosting functionality, no, so not the hosting, but the content hosting functionality of a blog, and you actually outsource the blog, which is something many people these days do. And also writing blog posts and writing books in general is something when it comes to content production, which is not very efficient. It depends on what you actually want to accomplish with the content you produce. But if you just record yourself talking, I just record myself talking like this. And I often don't edit the videos even most of the time. And then I could can put these videos out into the world. If I now blog, I have a, f a far lower typing speed, so a far lower information output speed into the, the medium I actually record with. So now the idea is, if there are platforms that are free and that let you host content, whether this is audio, blog or video for free already, why not just use an external page service that is very, very easy to host that additionally, basically has all the content management and also the domain reserving outsourced, which is basically also what social media platforms do. But you now have a page that is basically now your page. And this page could be your link tree. So now the idea is that you don't host something on this page. And you can create the same thing again in a classical web page. Just keep everything as simple as possible. But I, for myself, I have multiple web pages. And for all of these web pages, I have to remember which settings I applied where. And then you have to install plugins. So I kind of have 10 to probably 10 to 15 plugins installed on, on every single one of these pages. And if I then decide to add an additional plugin, I have to test this additional plugin. So a plugin is something that, for example, enables you to have a dark mode on your web page, even though your theme doesn't have a dark mode. And then you need to do the settings the same on all the single web pages, or you do them differently, but then it becomes more difficult to manage because it's not standardized. And now this creates a big hurdle for you when creating things, when creating blog posts. So the idea now is, again, to have Linktree as a hub or a similar service as a hub and just link to all the different pages where the actual content is hosted. So you have your Linktree and then it says a small symbol YouTube. Then it has a small symbol with maybe Patreon, basically a way to get you paid as a creator. Then you have maybe Instagram, you have TikTok and all these things are just links. 
and these just link out to pages where again you don't have to do anything but to upload and this is what actually enables i would say this creator economy that is currently developing and already existing because many of these steps these traditional steps imagine you would have to create a video hosting platform like youtube from scratch as a web page you can't probably and that's the reason you just upload to YouTube. And that's the reason YouTube exists, because many of these people cannot do it. And that's also the reason YouTube still is one of the main players, apart from many other factors like network, like network factors and things like these. Network effects, actually, it is called. So now, I actually now switched basically f my idea. My idea from a website and a hub. And now these two things for me are the same. So my website is now, these days, nothing else than a content hosting page, a content hosting platform rather, for my blog. That's the main function. And I also call it blog now on Linktree. The Linktree now has replaced my web page as the main site. So this means now I can, on all social media platforms, input the link tree then people who are interested in things i actually output in one of these channels can actually have one single link they can click on and this also simplifies all of these social linking things you can do on youtube for example you can link instagram you can link your blog you can link any anything else and you actually have to manage all of these things also because if you then for example i have 10 to 15 different channels this doesn't mean that all of these channels are big and things like these it just means that i have created these things to target audience, to basically target the audience. Because the more targeted the audience, the more the algorithms actually can predict what kind of content will follow next and then suggest the things you put out to the people who actually want to see it. Basically, it just if there is the content you want to do and the people who want to see it, it just creates a better link between those two if you target more, if you go niche, basically. The more you niche down, the better the prediction of the algorithms probably will be. And of course, also the more consistent the format. So now I switched all of my websites to Linktree. Linktree, I see it now as my website. And I see my websites now as a blog. And since my website these days is only a blog, I not necessarily would have to create now a, bl a website. Because I could also use Medium, for example, as a blog. I still to this day use my websites as blogs as the blogs which are then also kind of the podcast but that's a different story about how to manage content and how to maybe standardize content across different platforms without producing much more content for these different platforms but the idea is that i link people to my link tree now and the link tree is something that's compared to a web page, I would say 100 times easier. I have inputted so much time into my web page hosting and into adapting themes and then you upload the theme and suddenly there is our ads in the theme that link to the creator of the theme because it's free. And then <laughs> I had, for example, I had all my web pages hacked and now the idea is if you outsource these backend activities to somebody like Linktree and make it very easy, then you can sign into Linktree and I will create a tutorial on Linktree in one of the next videos where we actually dive into the backend and how to set it up and things like these. And these things are all outsourced now to Linktree. And then you can go into the settings, as I just mentioned, and just change the mode from a light theme to a dark mode. Or you can just input a new social link. So if you created a YouTube for another channel, then you just go into the administration page in Linktree and you just link the new thing and a new icon appears. If you wanted to do the same thing on your web page, and I actually wanted to do the same thing on the web page, basically linking all of these different social platforms, then you have the constraints of the theme. So the theme basically determines what you actually can input very easily into the into the web page. So this means you could have a YouTube icon up there, but only if the theme, so basically the bigger 
So how your web page looks is determined by the theme, and the theme is running on the content management system. But now, if your theme doesn't offer TikTok as a social media platform, the only thing you can do is either nothing or create a different page, or you cannot really integrate it without finding a solution that is much more complicated than you want it to be. So now, the idea is, or just how it looks on my web page. My web page actually is still or my web pages are still linked trees, kind of, because I still have YouTube, Facebook, Instagram linked in there. But since I cannot link all platforms I want to, because I cannot just add platforms in this, because there are just a limited amount of platforms available, you have to somehow make sacrifices and not have all websites on the web available as an icon on your web page. So now this means I still have these linked, but these days, Linktree has replaced my web pages as the hub in the internet, on the internet. 